of my favorite preacher. A road trip? Really? You want to go to Washington? Hey, honey, yeah. me and the preacher's going to go on a road trip to Washington. <laughs> I'm really excited about this trip, preacher. And you know, preacher, I'm going to drive, and I got, I got, I got wheels that are going to get us great gas mileage. We're going to save a lot of money. Should, it's, okay, should I be worried? No, no, okay. preacher, no, 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 okay. not at all. What is that? Watch out for that dog. Ah! You got better suggestions? Yeah, I side do. I think this guy's blind. I don't think he knows where we're going. Just in case you may not have known, one detail of the seldom mentioned is that in Washington, D.C., there can never be a building of greater height than the Washington Monument. On the aluminum cap atop the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., are displayed two words, lost deal. No one can see these words. In fact, most visitors to the monument are totally unaware that they're even there, and for that matter, probably couldn't care less. These words have been there for many years. They are 555 feet, 5.125 inches high, perched atop the monument, facing skyward to the father of our nation. Overlooking the 69 square miles which compromise the District of Columbia, capital of the United States. Two seemingly insignificant words, lost deal. Out of sight and out of mind, one might think. So what do the two words in Latin mean? Very simply, they say praise be to God. Lost deal is praise be to God. Though construction of this giant obelisk began in 1848 when James Polk was president of the United States, it was not until 1888 that the monument was inaugurated and opened to the public. It took 25 years to finally cap the memorial with a tribute to the father of our nation. 
Just stand in here in front of the boat. Hang on. Oh, you went. Hang on, man. Hang on. Hey, there's a, there's oh, a tow guy. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, look Stop. the other way. Stop. <laughs> hey, she looks she's looking at you. What's up with that? You know, I don't know what looks better, us or the aboard. Well, I don't know. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Welcome, Welcome you aboard. Do. Hey. Welcome aboard. Hey. Ah, Vote Republican. Yeah. Hey. 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 Amen. All right. What, what's that blind car? That looked like blind Carl. Amen. Oh, hang on, selfie time. Photo bomb. All right. Amen. All right. Lost deal. Praise be to God. From atop this magnificent granite and marble structure, visitors may take in the beautiful panoramic view of the city with its division into four major segments. From that vantage point, one can easily see the original plan of the designer, Pierre Charles Lafont, a perfect cross imposed upon the landscape with the White House to the north, the Jefferson Memorial to the south, the Capitol to the east, and the Lincoln Memorial to the west. A cross, you ask. Why a cross? What about separation of church and state? Yes, a cross. Separation of church and state was not and is not in the Constitution. So, so, my friends, how interesting and no doubt intended to carry a profound meaning for those who bother to notice. When the cornerstone of the Washington Monument was laid on July 4th, 1848, deposited within it were many items, including the Holy Bible presented by the Bible Society. Praise be to God. Such was the discipline, the moral direction, and the spiritual mood given by the founder and first president of our unique democracy, one nation under God. I am awed by George Washington's prayer for America. Almighty God, we make our earnest prayer thou will keep the United States in thy holy protection, that thou will incline the hearts of the citizens to cultivate a spirit of subordination and obedience to government, and entertain a brotherly affection and love for one another and for their fellow citizens of the United States at large. And finally, that thou will most graciously be pleased to dispose us all to do justice, to love mercy, and to demean ourselves with that charity, humility, and pacific temper of mind, which were the characteristics of the divine author of our blessed religion. And without a humble imitation of whose example, in these things we can never hope to be a happy nation. Grant our supplication, we beseech thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 